Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled musical celebrity video. This one is on a man who was extraordinarily ahead of his time, a leader and champion for other people's rights, including his own people. Somebody who spoke up and out against the government, considered extremely rebellious and anti-establishment at the time, although his music brought all kinds of people together, elevating the way that people thought and changing the direction and tempo of the landscape emotionally of that generation. He started a movement. Born on February 6, 1945, so interesting because he would be 75 years old today if he were to live. And it would have been absolutely amazing to see what this man would have done with the rest of his life had he been able to live. And I'm talking about Bob Marley or Robert Nestor Marley. He died on May 11th, 1981 from malignant melanoma, basically skin cancer, which apparently started in his toe, but then took over the rest of his body. Now, when I started to pick up on his energy, I couldn't figure out why he came to me because when I walked in the door, there was this ever so soft and subtle feeling I got as I walked by the couch. So I kind of turned and it was him. He was sitting there with his leg, one leg crossed over the other, and he was basically politely waiting for me to get home. This is the impression I got. Now, when I looked at his astrology chart, I wanted to see what that energy was because it was a little bit startling. I think of somebody who is, you know, an entertainer, they could be loud, they could be this, but he was actually, he's a very polite and he's a quiet man until he gets to know you. This is was my feeling when I walked by. Now he's an Aquarius sun being born on February 6th, a Scorpio moon. Now there was the quietness to him. He was kind of observing me and studying me. I was not aware of him for a while until I was, which means he had taken his time to see if it was okay to come into my space. That's how I take it. His rising sign was Sagittarius. Now, usually Sagittarius is when they walk in a house, as you know, for all you Sag people out there, they come bouncing in and they bang into all kind, <laughs> kinds of things and they're loud and they're kind of like just galloping through the house. He had none of that energy, but the way that I felt was he was getting me to understand the frequency of his body or his soul body. So that's very Aquarius Sagittarius. I also noticed that he had a lot of retrograde planets. We had Jupiter, Neptune, he had Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, pretty much everything was retrograde in his chart, which means he had a very prominent position in society should he reach a certain modicum of success, which he did. So all of those retrograde planets stepped into motion as he began to garner success in his life. So I looked around his chart and I was looking to see where the urge to have as many children as he had was in his chart. Now that's a funny thing to say, okay? Because you're like, what does that mean exactly? Well, with the eighth house Pluto, with Saturn in the seventh and Venus in Aries, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Venus in Aries is pretty much traditional. They're gonna go out and they're gonna find somebody that they connect with and they're going to chase them down and they're going to have a relationship with them and then once they're done, they're done and off they go. So I can see how this happened, but his his entire life was very karmic. So the amount of children that he had in his life was already set up before he came here to the planet because of a certain purpose, I feel for him. I feel like he had tremendous work to do. I mean, he was literally here 36 years, did all, I mean, nine kids, the movement that he started, you know, in the 60s and 70s with music, with the reggae music, which was both, um, I guess you could say it's a religious philosophy and it was a movement for peace and love. But here's what's interesting. Okay, when I was walking past his energy and I started to mesh, his energy is a lot, a lot different than other people that come through to me. So I kind of walked into his energy and it was like I I I felt it but I felt it very subtly. So the way that he impresses himself on me is in a very subtle way. Some people come in and they just smack you upside the face, you know, and they're like I'm here and here I am and they're loud and you can't help 
but just see them. He's much different. He flowed into my energy field. I immediately went back to age 11 with him. I went all the way back to age 11. And there was this carefree kid in a lot of ways with a lot of worldly problems and stresses on his shoulder. Pretty nice, happy kid, but a lot of thought towards where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? How do I help? very connected to the mother's energy and how to help. Did not like the way that he was looked at within society at that age. So he began to see people. Now this is interesting. Bob Marley, extremely connected psychically, strands of energy started coming to him is what he showed me. So he had, what he's trying to say to me, This what he's trying to say to me is instead of being a puppet for the people, he allowed his body to be moved in a spiritual way. He's telling me about his spiritual teachings or his psychic teachings or his magical practices as a young person around the age of 11. He had a lot of spirits around him and he went to them at different times, different people. He was pulled. That's how he showed me how he meshed with my energy. He was pulled energetically in certain directions as a child. Obviously, as a child, I can honestly say this, we probably know that we are talking to people, but maybe we don't understand the full capacity of what we're doing when we're psychic or why it's happening to us or, or, or the movement of it. But he was very much pulled in directions of people. And he shows me, um, I, I, I want to use the word I'll use the word guides, okay? But I want to call them gurus because it's how they look, but I don't like the word gurus. And he's not putting that in my head, but that's how I feel about it. There were men that were elders to him, I want to say. He was from a tribe, but it was a spirit tribe, not an earthbound tribe. And I feel like when he was born, he came here as part of that spirit tribe. So his thoughts to begin with were much different. I don't care what body he was born into. I don't care what skills he had. His thoughts were different. He came through with a spiritual component that was very strong early on. And these guides sat around him and I'm seeing them and they all sit cross-legged, kind of like he did when he was younger. Um, he must've been quite the handful of a child. I get, I get a good personality, I get quietness with him and I get just a, a reticence and an awareness of everybody around him. So I see this, he's showing me. Um, he also was born with some anger, he tells me. He did have an angry streak, but was not an angry person. There were things that made him mad and he thought about it and he ruminated on it. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to change this. This was in his thinking. The people around him when he was younger, he called on them to elevate the energy around him. So he, he, he spiritually called on these people and they were with him. He understood his spirit life. He didn't necessarily understand his earth life, which is an interesting and backwards dichotomy. It's kind of backwards. He lived more on the outside, outside the earth realm than he did on, he wasn't grounded necessarily. This is where a lot of his philosophy came from. He started to learn how to harness his own energy. He's talking about being very young and when, when you go to school and you practice at school and you do things and you, you, um, you do the things on the earth. You do the regimented things. You go to school, you learn the doctrine, you grow up, you have kids, you do this, that, and the other. He wasn't doing that as a kid. He was, he shows me rolling his pants up and walking into the water and thinking, he's thinking, he's talking and thinking, but no one's around him. So he went off on his own quite a bit as a young kid. I'm sure he had tons of friends and I know he did. He was very popular. Sad Rising is never not going to have friends, but there was a part of him that really kind of separated because he was being taught and schooled on the other side, not this side. So he came in with purpose. Now, I don't know that he understood that though. I don't know that a soul understands. I'm not feeling like he did. Like when I'm, I'm picking up on his energy, I'm not necessarily feeling like he understood the purpose of his life, but he knew that he wanted to sing and he wanted to speak and he wanted to talk and he wanted you to listen to him. He knew that very, very, very strongly. And this was something he felt it very important to get across. Now, when I'm looking at his energy 
as he's pulling the energy from these people that are around him. They're his guides. They're teaching him. And what he's showing me is like a net. So he's not going to fall too far while they're teaching. And when they left him or he, he was disconnected from them is when he started to feel like, oh, gosh, what has happened? But that wasn't until later, till he was like 28. Wasn't until then. But these, these guides, teachers, soul workers on the other side were teaching him how to do things, magical things, actually, magical practice. He was pretty good. I'm going to, that's the word I'm going to use. I don't know what else to call it. Spiritual practice, but using energy to claim back one's soul power is what he was doing very, very young. His imagination was fierce, just fierce. Um, he had a soft side. He liked, now, if I remember correctly, he was not a heavy person at all, but he loved food. Talking about loving food, just really loving food. Um, there was part of him also that knew he had purpose, but he wanted to engage in the day-to-day -day earthbound things, but he had this other purpose too. So he was very driven over here, and then he wanted to connect. And this was what he felt when he connected with women. Extremely promiscuous, and I mean that in a nice way. Um, not necessarily badly promiscuous. I mean, how do you call a young man promiscuous? They're all promiscuous, right? No offense, but seriously, <laughs> young men are young men. This is what they do. But he was, he connected with the energy of his lovers. Like he connected with it in a strong way and it made him feel comfortable. He was able to exchange the energy. That was a true exchange of energy for him and he could get lost in that moment. Now, what he talks about is being like 12 and 13 and 14 and being a little bit off of his game. This could be hormonal, puberty, etc. But it feels like it's something different. He's a little bit off his game. He can see things, but he's not seeing them in the direction that he used to see them in. So he's moving in a in he's just moving in this other way and he's he's not seeing things clearly. So there's a part of him that um there's a part of him that doesn't understand. He's spiritually lost at this time, but yet not. Can't find his guides, can't connect. Starts harnessing, it's almost like they threw him away to the side so he could start harnessing his own energy. He definitely practiced, I'll just say it, incantations, magic spells, whatever. He definitely practiced this. He practiced it he practiced it for second sight is what he's showing me. Not just to be psychic, but to see, actually see. Talking about being really blinded when he was born, not literally, but blinded to the world's ways. And he knew he needed to see. His teachers told him this. So he practiced this to be able to see. Now his message was pure at first, pure as far as he felt it was pure. Understand we all come in with messages, but he's backing up what he said. And it's, he comes through now because of what's going in our world now, what's happening now, not to mention that everybody's smoking the ganja now. <laughs> I had to add that in there because, you know, a huge proponent of legalizing smoking the weed, the ganja back then in the day. Um, and now it is legalized and everybody's smoking it now, not everybody, but a lot of people. So he comes through now wants to speak. So there's something with Bob Marley's going to be coming out. There's either going to be movies or documentary or somebody is going to say they're writing songs or music from channeling him because he wants to speak. Speaking about what is happening now versus what happened when he was on earth. Talking about the message of one love. Okay. Backing it up a bit. Telling me to back it up a bit. As he explains, and as I said before, when he was about 28 years old, he came to the realization that some of what he was saying was being taken by certain groups of people in the wrong way. Meanwhile, fighting the establishment and fighting the elite only to become one is what he says to me. So, and he used the word elite. So fighting the establishment and fighting the elite only to find out I'd become one of them. Part of his messages, a lot of what he channeled was truth. It was coming from spiritual, from di divine connection. The crown chakra, through the crown chakra. 
but part of what he was saying was misinterpreted is what he's saying now. So part of it, as in, it is true, we are all connected, that is true. We are all one, that is true, as in we are all connected, but we are not all one. So I don't know what this means, but he keeps backing me up on that. He's saying it's true, but it's disconnected in a way. So there's something I'm missing in the, in the conversation with this. So he speaks about it. He talks about being 28. He talks about taking a turn over a bridge is what he talks about. I don't know what this bridge is, but it was a bridge that he frequented. I don't know where this would be. Uh, anyway, it was a bridge that he frequented and he talks about turning on this bridge. He goes over here. He should have stayed this way, but he goes over here. He went down a new path. I feel like his management or his company was was changed at that time, around 28 or 29 years old. This is what I feel. And I feel like the music and the display of the music in the way that he intended it to be changes a lot at that time. And he starts to move in an entirely different direction for his career. He's got things he wants to do. There's He's got tons of writing over here, tons of things he wants to do. And he's trying to speak. I really feel like he would have gone in the direction of, if he were alive now, some sort of self-help type of person with a different kind of message. One that would not be popular based on what he started then and how he sees it now. Just the tail beginning of what was going on over here when he was alive and singing. The tail beginning of what we see now. He says, don't be tricked by the message. Don't be tricked by the message. I don't know what message we're talking about. I'm hearing him, don't be tricked. The way that I'm seeing him is he's kind of sitting in the background to me and I'm picking up on thoughts, but he's saying, don't be tricked by the message. So a lot of people are trying to follow, I believe, one way, one love, one way, one love. I'm just going by his music here, but I feel like he wants to say, no, wait, back up, stop and take it in a different direction. I feel like he's coming through to compose again and I feel like his message is coming through again. The message has changed and the message is different. Fight the establishment was always his message. He kind of was a rebellious against authority. He is his own autonomous person. Speak for the self. You are the self. You are in control of the self. And he lost his control is what he's saying. He lost his control around the age of 28. That's what he's saying. He was not in charge of the self anymore at that time. Um, hugely proud. I just got like goosebumps. Hugely proud of all of his children. Hugely proud. Hugely proud and want now <clears throat> wanting to say that where he came from lineage wise, the story is all misconstrued, all upside down, all not right, all not right. So a lot of what was said about his background in history, a lot of that was not as it seemed. So there was, was words were not correct around where he came from, who his his lineage was from. There's a lot of secrecy with that. And the secrecy was on the mother's part. Well, she may have thought one way, but there's a whole other strand of thinking. So this story was made for him. It's not his story is what he says. I don't know. Maybe this is something he's just saying to me and I'm misconstruing this. Sometimes when they give me feelings, it's hard. It's my interpretation of them. So you have to understand, I try to interpret as, as authentically as I can, but then, you know, who the hell knows? But I feel, I feel he wasn't his own person after the age of 28. And this is what caused the trouble. Now he distinctly talks about being in his early thirties all the way through his life and into his early thirties playing with dimensional portals. So he lived, okay. Definitely a warrior. He shows me a simultaneous lifetime as the one he was living here. This is why he would disconnect energetically. I think if you talk to people that knew him, they would tell you that at times it was like he was just shut down and wasn't there and it wasn't a drug thing. He literally learned how to open portals and to see into other dimensions. This is what he's saying. He played 
with it. He shows me like a world globe and he spins it around like this and he stops it and he looks through it. So he was a little bit of a magician of his time, a literally practicing the metaphysical arts or the occult arts, but into dimensions, talking about going through portals. I'm asking him and asked him about the cancer, about how he died and how, how that happened. Talking about going through the portals and it weakened the body's energy flow. So something in his early 30s, but he's also telling me at the time, somebody's stamping their fist on a desk, stamping their fist. This is a government person. Fist, fist, pound, pound fist. Um, I hope I'm not doing the power to the people fist, but no, somebody's pounding their fist on a table like a desk. The person is in a suit. So a tie in a suit type of person pounding their fist and he's sitting there. Somebody is pounding their fist, pound, pound, and they're demanding something from him. It's an, it's an office. It's, it's almost to me, a man in a suit, like a lawyer's office or an authority office. Um, the guy is heavy set. This is a political office. The guy is heavy set. He's got a square face. I feel like I recognize him. I almost don't want to say the name politically, but I feel like I recognize him. Not a president. Somebody in government, somebody in charge of like, um, I can't even remember what he was in charge of, but he's pounding his fist and he's like saying something and they're in a disagreement at the time. There's a lot of paperwork on this, on this desk and he's looking at it and he's watching the guy pound his fist and he's thinking in his head, like, how am I going to get around this? I don't know what this is. I'm, it could be like a tax evasion thing. I have no idea, but he's like pounding his fist and he doesn't want to do it. I'm not going to parrot that. I'm not going to parrot that. I'm not going to parrot it. I'm not going to speak it is what he's saying. So somebody is demanding that he say something and he won't say it. So he really basically stood up for what he believed in. He's like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not saying it. Not, not. Won't do it. Not doing it. Okay. So very stubborn, but stubborn with a purpose. Okay. But this guy's screaming at him. The guy in the suit is literally screaming at him. The face is square. The haircut's weird. Um, the man is immoral by nature, but we don't know that yet. He didn't know it yet, but it is an authority thing. And it's, and he, I, I see Bob getting up and literally like walking out of the room, shaking his head. And it's, and he's dressed just normal. Like he's dressed like he normally does. And suit and tie guy is like very pissed off. So he leaves there. He goes immediately over to somebody's house. The woman he was dating at the time, he would have been approximately 31 or 32. His life is changing. It's speeding up. He's showing me through these dimensions. What he's showing me is He's showing me, uh, this is how he's showing it to me. He's showing me very metaphysical, very spiritual, very metaphysical, very magical. I'm just going to say it. Call it whatever you will. This is what he's showing me. Um, seven curtains. He's going through seven dimensions, seven layers, but he's showing me curtains and he's blowing through them like this and he's going through them very quickly. Time is speeding up. He's ascending backwards, going forwards, backwards and forwards. This is where wrecking havoc on his body, but it's happening to him and he can't seem to stop it. He's being pulled in different directions. I am being pulled all over the place. I am floating. I am suddenly floating and I don't know where I am and then I'm back in my body. So he is having out of body experiences. He is connecting with the other side. He's going through places dimensionally. I almost, I'm going to say this, I feel like he was literally a time traveler in the most literal sense of the word, a time traveler. I don't think we know who Bob Marley was. I think we know the singer, but the spirit being was a time traveler. And he's like this, kind of, he's still sitting there. He literally leans against my couch and crosses his leg and just like has his hand on the, like he's casual like this. And he's like, yeah, like this, this is right. He's telling me this is right. Time travel. He's trying to show me he came into the physical body. This is time travel um, or, or dimensional, which is time. Talking about the time. I go backwards and forwards. His body is breaking down from this though. Okay. His body is breaking down. And then they toss something into his mouth. He says they sprayed it and they tossed it. I have no idea what that means. Um, He's showing me something. Okay, it sounds weird, but it's like when you throw a dog treat in a dog's mouth. 
They threw something in his mouth and that's when he got sick is what he says. So I don't know who the they is. I'm assuming I just I'm, before I assume somebody threw something into his mouth. They tossed it into his mouth unbeknownst to him. I almost feel like he's saying he ate something or he had tossed it into his mouth. I wonder if he was doing, I wonder if what we're talking about at the time, I have no knowledge of this. I know he smoked the weed and shit, but I don't know if he did something hallucinogenic. They tossed it into his mouth and I'm seeing him go out of his body again. So I'm assuming this is some sort of hallucinogenic. I don't know if we're talking mushrooms. I don't know if we're talking LSD, peyote. I don't know what we're talking. I, I don't even know if we're talking that. And it was just something they threw in his mouth that, that was conditioned to make him leave his body. I mean, I don't know who the they is, but I, I'm almost getting the impression that whomever he bought the substance, that is the impression, whoever he bought the substance from, whoever he, he bought the inject, ate this from, bought, I'm sorry, my words are getting mixed up here because the images are going through my head. Whoever he purchased this substance from, I have a feeling the substance was set up. Okay, so there was a set up to what was going on and they tossed it into his mouth. This is how he got the cancer is what he's saying to me. Now, oh wait, wait, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. I know how he got the cancer. Well, obviously it's melanoma, it's skin cancer. I understand this. Okay, down another crazy train road over here. I feel when he was going through the veil, no wonder I was getting confused. He was trying to back my words up. I'm going, forward through the veils. I'm going, I'm going. And I'm seeing one of those guides from when he was a child. And at first they were sitting like gurus, um, cross-legged, like you would see in a temple or, or something in India. Okay. Although they weren't necessarily Indian, but that's what it reminded me of. I'm going backwards and I'm looking at one of these teachers faces and the feet the, the face is alien. It's not human. It's not male. It's not female. It's an alien face, not in a scary sense, alien, tall alien being cloaked and clothed. And this is with the head down like this. And when he lifts the head up, I see that it's not a human face or a representation of a human face. Tossed it into his mouth. Whatever it was while he was learning and schooling on the other side, they gave him something to raise his vibration, tossed it into his mouth as he shot back into his body. This would be around the age of 31 or 32. So it took four more years for him to actually succumb to that illness. When they discovered the illness, he knew that it was planted on him. I am kind of feeling from Bob Marley that what he's trying to say to me is, whoever this teacher was to him that I described from his childhood that he connected with on the other side, I almost get the feeling that he's saying the angry suit guy and this guy were in conversations or connected somehow. So I don't know if he's saying that is the angry suit guy or they're different, but they're connected somehow. Either way, I jump ahead when he found out now, this is interesting. I know his religious belief was not to cut body parts, not to fuck with the human body. The body is a temple. And he's not wrong in that. However, when you have something that's going to spread through your body, you have a choice. What he was talking about with the cutting of the foot, I think they found it in his toe. What he was talking about was cutting the energetic energy fields in the body. And to cut that would have taken away some of his power. So he kind of risked it is what he was saying. I think we're talking about the meridian lines in the body. And I feel like he didn't want that one cut in the long run. You know, it might've saved his life. It might not have. I have a feeling he would have developed cancer anyway. So he probably did the right thing for him at the time. I'm getting a yes with that, that he feels like he did. I do feel he's very close to the earth's energy right now. And there is somebody who's going to be writing music through him. He's showing me this, um, or speaking through him. And it might be one of his children perhaps is going to pick up the message or connect with the message, or he's been connected with them. It's one of his boy children that looks different than the other children. It's a different, in other words, they all look like him. This kid looks or is a different shape than him. So not, not, not traditionally looking like him probably looks more like the mother. 
more of a fuller face. Just this is what I want to say. So I feel like when Bob got sick and he took the chance not to get rid of the toe, I feel like he knew he was playing the dice 50-50, but he was told in his meditation that he would be okay. He was told, this is the mess, this is what he wants to say. He was told that he would be okay, and he is okay. He's just not okay in the way that he thought he would be okay, as in alive on the planet, raising his kids, doing his music. He was going off in a different direction. I really feel like he, God, he comes from, he comes from warrior stock. I literally see him as warrior in past life. He was going back to that. He was really going to start standing up and there's no way they could have this. Whoever this screaming guy is in the office with the blue suit, they couldn't have it anymore. They could have no more Bob Marley speaking out against the agenda. Now, against the agenda of one love <clears throat> unification because that's, what he was going to start speaking up against. Not that we sh we aren't all connected, not that we shouldn't love each other. That's not what he's saying. He's saying the way that it was presented is not correct. So there's something in that message that isn't correct. And I know that's going to be a very unpopular sentiment, but he's talking about changing the message, changing it. We are all connected. He wants us to know this, but it isn't one love is what he's saying. And he's coming in specifically at this time frame and saying that that is not the way to follow. That is not the way to go right now. That's what he's saying. When he succumbed to the cancer, he's immediately showing me when he took his last breath and passed out of his body, he passed into fluid is what he's showing me. He passed into fluid. I don't know if that means he had like pneumonia and ended up dying from that or he literally passed into fluid like a womb fluid is what he's showing me water all around him and he shows me he's floating and he's talking about his body being shut down for a while until it until it could raise the vibration and this was from the cancer I actually am starting to believe that cancer is an alien disease not a human disease and I'm going to change my thinking on this I believe they have a cure for cancer I have believed that I'm going to say that I'm not sure that they have the cure for all cancers because some of it is generated outside of this atmosphere and some of it is generated in an alien alien, alien space that is not a human space. Therefore, a human being can't fix it because it doesn't resonate vibrationally here. That's what I'm going to say with the cancer element because this is kind of what he's showing me. They had to bring his soul spirit up. He was pulled out of the water. <clears throat> So happy to see his mother when his mother passed. Oh my God, so happy. Wrapped his arms around his mother when she crossed out of her body. So happy. His mother had been praying to see him. I don't know what her religion was or what her thinking, but she felt she had done, done wrong by him. And that was all cleared. Okay, so that was all cleared. Um, so happy to see his mother. Not an easy relationship, not an easy relationship at all. And she tried to warn him. She tried to warn him about something early on in his life, probably playing with the magic part of things. She tried to warn him, but he was so happy to see her. Arms wrapped around her as he pulled her through onto that side. I don't believe they're together right now. I believe that he's back closer around here. And I believe that we're going to hear more about him. But he's talking about the cancer and, and the way that it originates in a different atmosphere, in a different vibration, in a different location. And it comes to Earth. So cancer has been brought here from somewhere else. That's why we don't really fix it here. That's why we don't fix it here. That's what I get. Okay. That is my first video on Bob Marley. And once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.